At the State University of New York Stony Brook, researchers are observing chimpanzees in motion. The goal? To find out how early hominids came to walk upright. Watching the chimps in action, they will try to determine what each muscle group actually does. Flexing, rotating, and contracting. The complex muscles attached to the pelvis and thigh bone are carefully tested with the help of electrodes. This exercise shows that the gluteus medius, a muscle at the waist, is essential for controlling the tilt of the pelvis. The same holds true for human anatomy. When we lift a foot to take a step, the pelvis tilts in the direction of the raised leg. The gluteus medius of the opposite side then contracts to stabilize the pelvis. Without this muscle, the sway of the body would throw us off balance as we tried to move forward. The action of the gluteus medius is examined in active chimpanzees. When the chimp walks on all fours, the muscle barely moves. When it climbs a tree, the muscle activates. Sussman and his colleagues were surprised to find that the gluteus medius serves the same function in both chimp and human anatomy, rotating the thigh and maintaining the balance of the pelvis. But in each species, it plays a different role. In humans, the muscle permits a long-legged stride. In chimpanzees, a range of vertical motion with bent legs. With similar musculature in our pelvic areas, it's surprising that chimps became efficient climbers that didn't walk, while humans became successful bipeds. But as the dynamic in the forest changed and apes spent more time on the ground, the anatomy first developed to climb trees gradually allowed some primates to become proficient on two feet. Swinging through the treetops, heavier apes like the chimpanzee found that brachiating was a more efficient form of locomotion. Too large to scamper over higher branches, they would adapt both anatomy and behavior. We are the only animals that walk habitually on two lower limbs in a terrestrial niche on the ground, um, and that's the major hallmark of our locomotion. Now, there's many other subtle aspects of our bipedality that make us very efficient and able to walk over long distances without becoming tired. We sacrifice speed and we sacrifice some of the agility of the, say, African apes, our closest uh, relatives, who can scramble up a tree when danger threatens or can scramble up a tree to get food and then come to the ground at other times. But bipedality, for reasons that we are not even sure today, bipedality conferred a selective advantage on early hominids about four to five million years ago, and walking on two legs became the fashion, became the hallmark of our species. To this day, the cause of this biological rift between the African apes and humans remains unknown. With few fossils to go on, solving the mystery of what transpired when humans and apes parted ways has challenged researchers across the globe.
Dr. Satoshi Horai of Japan's National Institute of Genetics compares genetic maps in search of clues. Dr. Horai found that as the number of generations increase, so do the number of genes that differ in animals that branched off from our primate ancestors. According to Harai, a detailed examination of these differences can pinpoint when humans and chimpanzees split from their common lineage. We've estimated when humans and chimpanzees split off from one another. The figure is about 4.9 million years ago. This number is based on the total base sequence, so the margin of error is just about 200,000 years, which is an extremely small margin. So we think it's fair to say that they branched out about 5 million years ago. Long after their split from apes like the orangutan and gorilla, both hominids and chimpanzees had followed the same evolutionary roadmap. But their paths may have diverged in the wake of a change some five million years ago. For more than 10 million years, major tectonic activity had shaken the continent. cataclysm of heroic scale that transformed the African forests. Volcanoes erupted everywhere, and the terrain of East Africa rose almost two miles higher. Waves of molten energy from the Earth's core surged toward the surface. The shock created a 3,500-mile fracture along the edge of the African continental plate from present-day Ethiopia south to Mozambique. This barrage of tectonic energy dramatically altered the East African landscape, which until then had been blanketed by rainforest. Steep volcanic mountain ranges began to form along the length of the fault. Highlands rose, lowlands fell, and huge new lakes formed in what is now known as the Great Rift Valley. The Collège de France in Paris. Home base for Yves Copin, a paleoanthropologist associated with the Lucy excavation. He believes that geological forces are primarily responsible for the differing paths of hominids and chimpanzees. The fault itself was not a barrier, but the wall these mountains presented effectively became one. It prevented hominids on one side and chimps on the other from making the trip across and back. I think that all of these populations formed only one community, with common ancestors somewhere in the range of 8 to 10 million years ago, and that the population became separated. The appearance of this huge natural barrier had many consequences. It may have altered the fates of several species and changed the face of the East African landscape. In the years before it existed, the continent's tropical forests thrived on abundant rainfall, blown in on westerly winds. Later, Dr. Copon believes that the mountains cooled the air, shifting moisture away from the range's eastern slopes.
But the rainfall was the lifeline for Africa's tropical forests. And dwindling precipitation eventually caused major changes in the ecosystem as forest gave way to savanna. Though no record of their presence exists, the ancestors shared by hominids and chimpanzees were clearly tree dwellers who had prospered in the once lush forests. Now, they would have to adapt or perish. These new environmental pressures triggered the changes that led to human evolution. More of our ancient cousins 